This is a review of my unique CNC three spindle unit. I'm just going to give you a walkthrough. We've had this unit for about a month and uh, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about uh, how we received it, uh, what it looked like, how it's operated, what you need to do. So it is roughly a 4 by 8 unit. You can see that we have actually uh, 49 by uh, 97 inch MDF. What we have it sitting on is there's an aluminum plate that's sitting on top of a metal blade, uh, base. Then you have uh, what appears to be fiberglass and then you have what we did is we just built up and screwed down using some T-bolts into the uh, this uh, T-slot, actually 5 16 inch bolts. So that then has a spoil board rolled up on top of that, as you can see here. All right, now um, the unit itself though is actually just a little bit longer than 4x8 because it actually starts out here and then comes all the way down here and you can see it's a little bit shorter um, the way we're using it in 4x8 than the standard metric size. Okay, so this is the bed. Um, along the bottom here we have some stops. We have rails. These are oiled by a built-in lubrication system. We have helical rack. So this rack is actually diagonal which reduces some of the noise and chatter. Um, you have slide bearings of course over here. And inside of here, we have a gear reduction stepper motor. So it's actually got a stepper motor, then a gear belt driven uh, reduction. Okay, now up on the head here, we have three spindles. We just got a generic ProTech uh, electric. I seem to have no problems with them. They're standard ER25s. Uh, the only complaint that I have with them, as opposed to our previous uh, Columbo spindles is, is these spindles here actually have a fan because they're not uh, they're not externally cooled. They have a fan but it turns at the exact same speed as the spindle because it's on the same shaft. Our uh, Columbo spindles actually had a 220 volt fan that ran all the time that was much quieter. So they are a bit noisier only because of the fan. They do have easy disconnects for the uh, plugs here as you can see. And uh, each one of those spindles can come down based upon pneumatics and we can actually slide it up and down. Now, we don't have it and it's uh, not configured here. There actually is dust collection and there up at the very top is a um, uh, pneumatic cylinder that caps off that. So here's actually the output of the um, uh, vacuum. Okay. Let's see here. Sure, I get this uh, clear here. And uh, these are adjustable. You can adjust how fast they come down. They've got little needle valves in them. Uh, this seems to work okay. Uh, we haven't fully utilized the second spindles yet. Uh, it requires a little bit of programming to get that done, and we haven't completed that. Now, on the Y carriage, what you have here is back here you have a spring to kind of offload some of the uh, load when it's down and to kind of prevent it from slamming down. Uh, these little pieces here are the oiling hoses that uh, provide oil. Uh, up here you can see a lead screw for the Z and a coupler. There's a uh, stepper motor up in here. Here we have a uh, separator and regulator. Uh, here we have some E-chain. You can see that it's large enough that you can shove a few extra lines in here. And in fact, what we've done is we've put in and replaced actually the line they provided us, which was eight millimeters, with this half inch line. Not only so we can eventually use the um, uh, cooler for tool link cooler, but also we typically will mount blowers and other things onto it so for cleaning off material. Uh, here we have the uh, Oiling manifold. These are little uh, adjustable um, needle screws so that they can actually adjust how much uh, oil goes into, in this particular case, the Y uh, slides. Now, up in here, we have a uh, Z, I'm sorry, a Y motor. Here's the Y motor. And you can see that uh, it's actually underneath here, it's got actually a gear reduction in there. Um, this all inside of here is just a, just a bunch of uh, air hoses and stuff. Now I will say that 
these over here, these air manifolds, these are the manifolds that come on and are triggered from relays inside uh, the control unit and uh, they leak like a sieve. Um, one of them was cross-threaded and the rest all had such crappy PTFE tape that we had to pull them all out and put proper, real, honest-to-goodness PTFE tape and, to get them to seal up. On the top up there, you've got more of the hoses going out up to the Z-slide there that goes down. And then in back there, you can just see it. It is a Z non-gear reducted 1.8 degree, 4.2 amp uh, stepper motor. And we got this unit with steppers, uh, not with servos. It's plenty fast enough. In fact, actually, it's too fast. We'll, we can run it up to over a thousand inches per minute, but it's just a little dangerous running it that fast, in my opinion. Uh, we have the back cover off here. Now there is a bit of a hum here and that's coming only from the Z motor and it seems to be because of holding current. Uh, it's not a problem with anything other than the holding current. Uh, in the back here you have a cable tray uh, chain holder and uh, we have little access holes. Uh, what we are going to ultimately do is uh, access it through here. These are all welded on pieces. These are all welded on. Um, we're going to put in some air so if we come back across here to the other side, we have another manifold for um, here. The, uh, this is the X-axis manifold for uh, oiling. And so this actually sends out for these right here, the oil necessary. Um, we have an electric um, automated uh, oiling system. It's total junk. And and you can see here it leaks, for example, here we have it leaking and that came from the factory that way. They did send us all spare parts. I will say that the service has been good. They have sent us the spare parts necessary uh, to fix the problems. Uh, this is also 220, so keep aware that's actually 220 driving this. So this is not low voltage or anything. So what we do is we just manually plug it together. Safest thing in the world? No, probably not. Um, now I will say that this did not come grounded. I am a big fan of grounding, especially in this air conditioned building. Um, static electricity build up. I think everything should be grounded. Um, and the Z and Y should be all grounded. Table, everything should be grounded. Did not come grounded. So we did run uh, a grounding cable up to the unit and then up into the Z and ground it, uh, grounded everything. Um, you do have right here proximity sensors. In this particular one we only received uh, homing proxy sensors to indicate homing locations and uh, we do not use those. Uh, you can see another homing proximity sensor here. So this is not limit switches. When it gets to the end, it'll simply run into the bump stops. Now along the side here, we have a little catch tray. And this catch tray, which is turned upward, does actually do a reasonably good job of catching a lot of the gunk. And we cut so much gunk that sometimes a job will be completely filled up here. Uh, it, it, we use snow shovels to move all of our junk out. Uh, but you can see here that there is material on the uh, on the slides and uh, there are wipers down here that stop that. Um, down here we have our main cable tray. You can see that uh, it's plenty wide enough. It is also the same size as the Y. It's a little fuller because you got some more cables in here. Um, and then down here at the bottom we have adjustable feet. Now here's one complaint I have. Um, these flat areas catch all kinds of junk because it comes off the table. Those should have probably been boxed in. Also note that these boxes are not fully welded. They're, on, they're welded in most of the places or on sides, but they're not fully welded in there. So for example here, we have one that's welded on the base, ground flat, which probably even reduces some of the structural strength of that weld. And then uh, down here, we have uh, no welding. Okay, there are six feet along the base. They are fully adjustable. They got little rubber pads on the bottom, so they're fairly good. Um, structurally, I don't think there's a problem. This thing is extremely overbuilt, so I don't think even with the welding issues, you're going to have problems with that. Okay, here's where we exit the unit. Um, it appears that you can actually have it somewhat customized uh, as to exit location, front, back, side, wherever that comes along. You can see we've run a half inch hose there in addition. 
It comes over here. Now, we got this made for Mach 3. And they don't like Mach 3. Just know that. If you get a unit made for Mach 3, expect to do some work on it. The Chinese love built-in controllers. They love those little all-in-one, complete built-in uh, units. And uh, if you order it without it, sure, you're going to get a Mach 3 compatible device, but it's uh, not going to come with a computer, probably, unless you specify it or something like that. And um, it's going to be hokey. So first of all, this screen here doesn't fit any normal size screen. So here we've actually had to purchase. It took probably a couple hours to find a touch screen, actually, that's going to fit in there. But even that doesn't fill the whole area. This is not really a correct size. Uh, they do have little opening things here, so you can press these, open them up. Uh, you might even consider since uh, it has a flat surface on here, you might even consider taking the door completely off at the hinges and just, just throwing it away. Get a big old flat screen monitor that's 22 inches or something. Uh, there is a bottom half that is uh, hinged and there is a stop. Now I should mention this unit did not come with any stops on the unit itself. So actually at the uh, CNC machine there are no stops. This is the power button. It powers down uh, the spindles and the motors and everything else. It actually just turns on and off a contactor. So there's the back side. In our unit, we have three spindles. They are all the same spindle. So that means that we are able to use a single VFD as opposed to multiple VFDs. So what happens here is in the back, uh, there's just some contacts, which we'll show you in a second. So that's a VFD. We had to do a huge amount of effort on this to get this VFD working properly. Now it theoretically came wired so it works off to 10 to 0 to 10 volts. Uh, didn't work with the piece of crap. We actually switched it over to using some code we found uh, to using uh, RS45 and that works perfectly. It's within 10 RPM of the actual